again everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Sarah and I am yet again in front of a different background but hopefully this one will stick around for a little while. So today's suggestion is actually from a couple of students of mine. So if you didn't already know, I teach high school and it's the time of year when all of my students, former students, are headed off to college, back to school. And I had a couple of my students actually request a video about some great plant advice for their dorm room. So if you are new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button for more plant-related content. And without further ado, we'll get into today's video. So like I said, today's video is geared towards back to school, buying plants for your dorm room, what kind of plants can you even have in a dorm room? And so I thought I'd start with some general plant-related dorm room advice, and then I'll hop into a couple of specific recommendations of plants. The very first thing I wanted to bring up or recommend is just looking into can you even have a plant in your dorm room? So that might include things like just checking into rules. I don't know of any colleges that say you can't have plants in your dorm rooms, but it's always better to just check and be safe. And the other thing is to go ahead and check with any roommates you might have, especially if you're putting them in a common or shared area, just making sure your roommates are okay with having these things in your room. The second thing you want to take into consideration is the amount of room you have for these plants. Not only will this dictate the size of plant, but it can also dictate the type of plant you get. Some plants definitely stay a lot smaller, a lot longer, and some plants will start out small and end up taking up quite a bit of space. You'll also want to consider the general temperature and humidity of your room. Again, most of the plants that I'm going to recommend, that's not really overly important, but just something to keep in mind as you're looking for plants, especially if you don't have control over that temperature. Speaking of controlling the temperature, just keep in mind if you are purchasing a plant, if you're planning on putting it somewhere near a vent, a radiator, something like that, that also can affect the plants. So just something to keep in mind as you're shopping. And the final thing to keep in mind is the amount of light that you will have available for your plants. Now, my suggestions will have a variety, some lower light and some higher light varieties of plants, but again, something to keep in mind, do you have space near a window? Do you have a window that faces a sunnier side? Or do you have darker corners that might need some low light tolerant plants? The other thing to take into consideration is just the amount of care that you have available to put into these plants. So some plants take a lot more time and energy and consistent care. And there are definitely some plants that are a little bit more able to be neglected if you are studying a lot for finals or have lots of extracurricular activities going on. You'll also want to take into consideration who's going to care for these plants during the summertime. So if you are living on campus, you will probably have to pack everything up and move it out during the summertime, which if you live somewhat close to home and are able to drive home, this may not be a huge issue for you, except you may want smaller plants. But if you live further away, you're going to be putting things into storage. What is going to happen to these plants during the summertime? Are you planning on getting rid of them at the end of the school year and buying new ones in the fall? Or are you planning on trying to find somewhere to store them? Just again, something to keep in mind before you go purchasing a whole bunch of plants. So I think that does it for my general plant advice. Again, just being mindful going in, do you have the time and energy to care for these plants? As well as if you have the space and can supply those plants needs, that will help you be happier with your selections and happier in the long run with your plants. So many of these plants have showed up on my easy plant care or low light plant care lists before. I'll make sure I link a few of those videos down in the description as well as in the cards, but it should be no surprise that one of my first suggestions is anything in the pothos or scandapsis family. You probably recognize this type of plant, the vining, the heart-shaped leaves. These are really great options for lower light areas. So if you have a desk or a bookshelf that just needs a little bit of greenery and you want something that's going to take a little bit of abuse, a pothos or a scandapsis is great. Now keep in mind these plants definitely need weekly, every 10 days-ish sort of care. So they are something that's going to take some consistent care, but overall they can add a nice amount of greenery and then they can start to trail and they're wonderful additions to your dorm room. 
My next suggestion is something that I personally don't have a whole lot of, but succulents can be a great addition for a sunnier dorm room. So succulents like this jade plant are a great option if you have a sunny space that you can put them in because they don't require a whole lot of water. Succulents are the type of plant that you can leave for a couple of weeks and just water whenever you happen to remember it. A great option if you are on the busier side. Just keep in mind, any type of succulent will prefer the most light that you can get it. So hopefully you have a sunny window or somewhere near some sunlight that you can place this plant. Speaking of succulents and succulent type plants, it should come as no surprise to you that Hoyas made an appearance on this list. Now, this is the Hoya Lacunosa. I also recommend the Crimson Princess or the Carnosa. I definitely will link my Easy Care Hoya or Hoya for Beginners video somewhere so that you can check that list out. Hoyas are somewhere in the middle between pothos and our more succulent type plants. They can go a week or two without water but need a little bit more care and they will tolerate a little bit lower light than some of their succulent friends, but they definitely prefer the most light that you can get them. So if you're looking for a vining plant that maybe requires a little less watering, finding a variety of Hoyas will be a great option for you. Okay, so my next category of plants is going to be probably no surprise to you guys. It's the ZZ plants and snake plants. Now my snake plant isn't available at the moment, but I have my ZZ plant here. Both of these are great options if you have a darker dorm room or a darker corner in your dorm room that you would like to fill with a little bit of greenery. Both of these are also kind of on that indestructible list, so you might see them come up quite often as plants that are impossible to kill. Both the ZZ plant and the snake plant can take a little bit less light. They can also be watered less frequently, often only needing to be watered every three to four weeks. So makes a great option for filling kind of dark corners in your dorm room. Plus they both can get a little bit of height to them. So if you're looking for something that's going more vertical and a little less horizontal, both the snake plant and the ZZ plant are a great recommendation and you can find them at almost any local garden center. And then my last suggestion for you is to take cuttings of plants. Maybe you can even get them given to you by somebody that already has a plant and just sticking them in a glass or a jar of water. These are great for almost anywhere in your dorm room. These can go on a shelf, a desk, anywhere that you might like a little bit of greenery and they require very little care, just keeping the water fresh and clean and maybe every once in a while adding a little bit of nutrients, but they will last you quite a while and bring a little bit of greenery into your life. I hope you found these suggestions helpful. Let me know in the comments below what plant or plants you are planning on bringing into your dorm room. As always, thank you so very much for watching. If you found today's video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and I will see you very soon with another video. Bye.